And then what if you wanted to try to move another color, like say this color, and you could put like this textured wall paper here and just brayer over it a little bit. I think that was thick enough to pick up some paint. It's not terribly thick, but there is paint on here. And then you can transfer it over to another part of your painting. That's a very faint texture. So the thicker the paint is, like if I go into this thick part, you'll see how I can transfer more paint. So there's more on there. Go over here again. And now that has some pretty nice, interesting texture, even on the edge of the board. You can continue to draw with dry mark making at any point. So I love mark making and you may not, but if you do, then just experiment with um, going back into wet paint and seeing what happens. That's a very subtractive thing to do. You can also take an eraser and you can subtract paint that way. So again, where it's thick, I can expect to subtract paint. I'm pushing it away. And that in itself is pretty cool. But again, it doesn't do any good if it's just gesso. <laughs> so, but where it's thick, it does make a kind of a cool mark. So maybe I'll come around like this and it actually does kind of slip when you hit the thicker areas of paint. But think about all the things you can do with an eraser. And then I usually wipe my eraser off. You can take a bamboo skewer and also, again, where the paint is thicker, you can make some, some little marks. You tap at it like this. You can draw into it like that. Again, it doesn't do any good to do it where there's no paint, but where there is paint, you'll find some interesting things happening. This is a subtractive method right here. And, okay, so let's try to put on some collage paper. And I wanna show you that it, to make your collage paper stick really well, I have some different examples here of collage paper. Kind of the do's and don'ts. <laughs> Super thin is gonna work the best. This is pattern paper. Other thin papers are rice papers. They're very thin. I also recently printed out some collage paper. Let's see if I can find it here. Onto fabric, and I haven't actually, this is like the first time I'm trying it, but this is the product. It's just a silk inkjet printable fabric sheet. So it's, it's silk, and silk is very thin. So I thought I would just try this. Here is my printout onto the silk. I just ran it through my printer. And I'm gonna take a small portion of this. Let's see. Um, I'm gonna take out this little design because I like it. These are um, from a Japanese kimono pattern book. So what it is, it's silk fabric, but it has a backing paper. The backing paper is what gives it enough strength or rigidity to go through your printer without wrecking your printer. Because <laughs> if, if you put really thin rice paper through your printer, it could get jammed and you certainly don't want that. So I'm just gonna cut this out a little bit and just randomly. And then, and this is the first time I'm using this, so I really don't know how it's gonna work, but there is a back, a backing that you peel off and not sure if I can do this with my gloves on. I think I see it coming apart, but yeah, there's definitely, it's not hard to get it off, but you, Having gloves on does not help. Okay, there we go. Um, so there we go, it's peeling. And you can see how I'm peeling the fabric off of the backing paper. <clears throat> the backing paper is feels like printer paper, that's the thickness. And then of course you've got your really thin 
fabric. That's really nice. So thin is really going to be the best solution for collage paper if you want to try that. So then grab some cold wax medium with or without Galka gel. I don't think it hurts to have Galka gel. I think it's probably a good thing. I'm going for a dry area here just so that you can see it. You put down your cold wax medium and then you adhere your collage piece like this and then you want to lock it in with more cold wax medium. This is the only glue you have. Notice how the silk though kind of just disappears and what you're left with is this beautiful inkjet print. So I've locked it in now and you can see through it. That's pretty cool. Um, and we'll check on this uh, tomorrow and see how it is. Um, that's really the test. It's the test of time. You check in on it and you see uh, when it sets up, is it really locked in? Okay, so that was my super thin, um, but I also have a piece of pattern. Um, it's from a pattern, simplicity pattern, so a lot of you who sew would know about that. And I could put down some cold wax medium over here. Again, you need some cold wax medium underneath your collage paper. It could just be wet paint as well, so I can go over that green mark. Just coat it and then lay it down. So if I want this whole thing, maybe I'll tear it a little bit or maybe not. I'll just put the whole thing down here. So make sure you've got enough of that cold wax medium for the entire piece. Lay it down, just press it down. And you can see how this tissue paper is so thin that it essentially disappears as the cold wax medium soaks in. And the only thing you can really see then is the words that are on there. It's pretty cool though to be able to see that and then the paper kind of disappears. Okay, so you put it in, you put it on there and then, you know, again, you put it under and over, under and over. And then I've got, so those are two very thin pieces of collage paper. Um, my next one would be printer paper. That's pretty thin. That was like the backing for this. So again, I can put some cold wax medium down and just set this in there and then go over the top, you know, press it in a little bit. And there you go. There's your collage paper. Just make sure you've got enough cold wax medium. Don't be too skimpy, but don't be too thick. Because as you know, you know, cold wax medium in the jar is opaque white. If you put it on too thickly, then, then you won't see your collage piece as well. Then I've got a piece of, um, this was rice paper, but what I did with it was I coated it with clear gesso. And this is the brand I use, Liquitex Clear Gesso. It's one of the only clear gessos that I'm aware of. And you just brush it on with a brush. It's water soluble. And it feels kind of sandy, but it's the sandiness that I believe will help collage paper to stick to an oil and cold wax painting. So I'm going to just set that in there like this and then press it down and then again lock it in with your cold wax medium. You can blur the edges if you want with paint. So that's a lot of techniques right there, but you would just keep going. So like I've got another piece of collage paper and this is cardstock. Cardstock is to me a little bit too thick. I can try to get it to stick here. I will put some cold wax medium down and I'll be generous with that because uh, this is a tough one, but I like this. Maybe I can get it to stick. So squish it down and then come over the top and lock it in. Again, this is the only glue you have. And I will have to check on this one, um, you know, in a day or two and then maybe in a week and kind of just make sure I can get it to work if I keep checking on it. But you have to be sure that um, you do check on it because you don't know what it's going to do in a day or two days. It might 
um, come, come off the painting and then you just want to try and you can try to attach it again or just find out that it's too thick. So sometimes papers are too thick and if that happens then that's just the way it goes. <laughs> okay so um, now I'm starting to build this painting you know it's still very early stage but I just wanted to show you a lot of different techniques and then I want to show you like what happens when um, some of these areas are wetter and some are drier and where they're dry I mean it's no problem to put more paint and do all those techniques we just talked about however when things are starting to get wet like here um, what happens if I try to brayer over that so maybe I'll take my brayer and show you what happens I'm going to add some white paint to this go lighter and mix that around mixing it until you like it and there we go take my brayer charge it it's nice and wet notice the surface of this um, collage um, sorry the freezer paper when you charge your brayer and this is very wet paint you can I don't know if you can see it or not but it's got that you know typical tacky look to it and so now if I go over some area that's super wet like here um, it doesn't quite like that I'm not even putting any pressure on it if I did put pressure on it it slides even more so that's why um, you have to know what techniques you can do when your painting is dry versus wet versus tacky I don't have anything really tacky right now because the paint hasn't had a chance to set up but if you do that brayering is one of those techniques that is best done when your painting is either tacky or dry of course if I keep going over and over and over and over it then it's kind of just replacing what was underneath it so that's just to show you that um, <laughs> that piece just came see it, it, it moved so if I maybe I'll just go over it with my brayer I'll try to lock that guy in so when you start to see things slipping and sliding you know that um, whatever technique you've just tried probably isn't working very well however you can then go into the subtractive techniques like let's say that that happens you're like oh no it's too glippy gloppy well you can start to subtract the paint you can take a tool and you can draw into it and that's pretty cool right so then I've got extra paint on here what can I do with it maybe I'll go over here and make a mark like that and this tool has four different sizes of these little teeth and I really love this tool so when you get too thick like okay it just took my collage piece off because I keep forgetting it's there but you can just put it back down again and let's see if I can get that to stay clean this palette knife off and grab some cold wax medium I mean that happens to me all the time that I forget collage paper is there and if you're doing kind of a um, aggressive technique you know you will dislodge your collage paper so just expect that to happen you kind of have to remember where it is and then just let it set up before you go crazy um, but that's okay it's good these things happen when I'm doing this demonstration okay so um, I always like to ask myself like what don't I have I've got lots of marks I've got rectilinear I've got a square this this collage piece and this collage piece would be considered highly rendered um, this is nice and gloppy now so I could try to um, put another texture material in there like how about a little bit of lace so here's some lace and if I lay it on top of like this and then get my deli paste and cover that over and I don't need to use the whole 
deli paper. I just need to put it where it's mostly wet. And take a little brayer and go over it like this. I do like to have a, a pair of tweezers handy just for these types of times when you know it's easier to grab the edge of something like lace here. So then I can peel it back and there is really a very delicate texture on there. Hard to see, I know, but you can see um, when this dries is when things get really interesting. So if you're really into texture, you know, you could go, instead of going for all the shapes I'm going for, you could go for like just, you know, one whole color and let it set up a little bit and then do another color and then texture with all kinds of materials. I can show you a board that I did. I mean, there are a couple of boards I've done. This is really highly textured right here. And notice that this one wouldn't be about shape. This one's more about texture. And so um, it just depends on what you love. If you're saying it's not shape, but you love texture, then maybe you're just gonna work on a board like this. So it's all, it all comes down to, you know, what is it that you love? And, okay. So we continue. And I basically wanna just keep doing this until I find that I really can't do anything anymore because but on the other hand I don't want to like ruin the things that I do like I'm not nothing's precious or anything like that but I'm just trying to show how you would proceed and then know kind of when to stop if you're starting to be okay with where you're at that doesn't mean the painting's done it just means okay I, I can't do the techniques I, I'm doing any anymore so just maybe I should take a break um, this is an example of making a mark a monoprint mark with an RNF pigment stick directly onto the paper. And then let's see, does it go wet into wet? This is one of those techniques that actually does go wet into wet. So even when you're wet into wet, I mean, it's not gonna be the world's best transfer, but it does work at least a little bit. Let's try it over here. That might've been a little bit too wet. And that was just a very light mark. And there are little bits of the RNF pigment stick that are on there, which is fine. All right, so I have like, this is just graphite over here. And I kind of like that effect. You don't, don't feel like you have to cover every square inch of your painting just because there's some gesso. Some people have asked me that before. Uh, you, if, you know, in my case, again, I'm a mark maker, so I might look at the opportunity of seeing some white gesso as, okay, maybe I'll put in some more marks. Like I don't have, I have some darks like here that, that was originally done, but I can restate that like this. And, you know, I can continue to draw at any time. This is my cray pause. And I just went over that piece of um, collage paper because I forgot it was there. <laughs> I restate um, a dark here. Ah, there is collage paper. See, I can draw over that. And let's see here. So when your painting starts to get more paint on it, um, what I have realized is that you can continue to work on it if you go thicker. So if you want to continue to work on it as opposed to letting it dry overnight, which if this were like, I would just let this dry overnight, but just to show you, if I take a color and I wanna add more paint, cause I'm not done painting yet, I'm having a good time and I don't want to quit. So what do you do? I'm just going to play around with some color here. Make it kind of thick. Add more yellow. I'm basically looking for a color that I don't have yet. I'm going to add more blue. And then I'm going to add some dark gray. Now oh, it's really dark. I really encourage you to spend, you know, lots of time 
mixing your colors on your palette and just being an observer because you'll learn so much and um, you know the tendency is to be in a hurry to do everything but there is no hurry and I would also have like a sketchbook or a notebook or something and just take notes you know what are your observations there there's nothing you can do wrong but but just by observing like what techniques are working for you you know in a wet area versus a dry area um, so here's that green and this is really wet. Remember how the brayer slipped and everything, and I might say, okay, I can't do anything more here, but that's actually not true. You take um, thick paint and whatever tool you're applying it with, if it's a Messermeister or this is a silicone tool, if you have your tool almost parallel to the surface, I mean, look at how thick that paint is. I mean, the only reason it's going on there is because it is so thick, and yes, it may pick up some paint from below, but if you really want to keep painting and your underpainting is wet, then you kind of have to do go thicker. And like I can turn the board this way and again with it um, almost flat to the board here, I can do that. And then once it's thick like that, you know, you're not necessarily done. You can take more deli paper. I like to cut it in half because it's for a 12 by 12 that's a pretty big chunk there. Um, you could take even a crumpled paper towel but let me let me crumple up this deli paper and you can go into a thick area like this and again if you love texture um, this might be really fun for you. See there, I go into this area that was dry. No trouble at all moving that paint over. Anywhere that it was kind of dry, can move it over. But that's a very um, strong texture. So I like texture, but I'm also always on the lookout for like, okay, is that too much texture? So let's say that I did that and it's like, okay, I like that texture here, but I'm not real, real happy with it over here. You can just move it around with your silicone tool. And yeah, it might blend with what's underneath it, but you're just playing and having fun. Again, you can remove paint with your silicone tool and then you can put it elsewhere. Just keep moving it around mixing and blending. Maybe I like this color. Add some over there. Maybe I want to take some of this color and add it here. Notice my tool is at a 45 degree angle. It's not flat, but I'm hitting an area that's quite thick. So I do have to be a little careful not to mess the paint into that lower layer. If I do want to um, kind of blend those colors, I can press harder. Um, just like this, you see. Then I'm mixing with the paint that's underneath it, but then I can also, like I can tell, I'm actually lifting paint and it's not even disturbing this. The reason is that, again, this encaustic board really soaks up your paint. So it, this, this lower layer here has like gone into that gesso and it's almost like it's, it's there, it's not coming off. Um, but your silicone tool is this amazing tool for um, making, you know, this hard edge. But then you can come back later and soften an edge. But it's good for putting it on and taking it off like that. Can put a dark gray. You don't always have to use color. Sometimes you might want to just use some gray. When you have just gray, your colors will pop even more. We talk a lot about that in my design course. Um, so basically those are the techniques that I'd like you to practice. And whoops, I almost put that in my paper towel when I could have put it on my slot board. So um, get in the habit of using your slot board and that way you'll, you might end up with a favorite painting. It's amazing how many students end up having a favorite painting that came from their slot board. 
Okay, so basically um, there is some pretty wet paint in there and that's my cue to kind of stop and wait, go overnight and then come back into it when it's now tacky. And then you can pretty much do um, a lot of other techniques. Okay, so I hope you enjoyed that. Thanks everyone. Bye now.